$408,000. This is how much you can make per article by writing about banks, presidents, and other notable figures on Wikipedia. That's why teachers told us not to trust what we see on Wikipedia. After all, anyone can change it. But have you actually ever seen someone edit or change a Wikipedia article? I know I haven't. But somehow, there's a Wikipedia article about virtually any topic that you can think of, whether that be President Calvin Coolidge's pet raccoon or fluid mechanics. In fact, according to a Wikipedia page, there's a total of 58 million Wikipedia pages. Traditionally, these articles are written by super dedicated volunteers, people who strongly believe in the free sharing of information, like this guy. This guy, Stephen Pruitt, has apparently made nearly 3 million edits on Wikipedia and written 35,000 original articles, all for no compensation. He says that the idea of making it all free fascinates him, but not all Wikipedia writers are quite as noble. Here's the thing, the influence of Wikipedia has grown tremendously over the past 20 years. Nowadays, the information found on Wikipedia is often taken as gospel because oftentimes, you don't even know that it's from Wikipedia. Take voice assistants for example. Whether you're asking Alexa, Google, or Siri, much of the information you're consuming is directly from Wikipedia. The same thing is true for ChatGPT as well, which has been trained using the entirety of Wikipedia. In fact, companies use Wikipedia so much that Wikipedia's parent organization, Wikimedia, has actually started charging companies for using Wikipedia. And their first customer was none other than Google themselves. This in itself has raised concerns about how these big tech companies can exercise control over Wikipedia. But more importantly, this has added an indescribable amount of credibility to Wikipedia. All of a sudden, writing for Wikipedia isn't just a case of contributing to some online forum. It's a case of defining the truth, as what you write will be repeated by billions of voice assistants and generative AIs around the world. I think you can start to see why this would be an extremely valuable resource to push a certain narrative. Welcome to the black market of Wikipedia. Writing Wikipedia articles to push a certain narrative can be super lucrative, but getting into the business isn't all that easy. According to teachers, publishing articles is something that just about any random joke can do, but that's actually completely false. In fact, the process of publishing to Wikipedia is extremely hard and long, especially for new accounts, which is where you probably have to start. I bet that Wikipedia is one of the only services that you use on a regular basis, but don't have an account for. Anyway, once you create an account, you'll be greeted by this page which is basically a dashboard to track your social credit on Wikipedia. As you can see, I have none, but this is where you'll have to start if you want to get into publishing actual articles. First, Wikipedia will suggest a bunch of articles for you to make small edits to in terms of spelling, grammar, and tone. You'll have to edit at least 10 pages before you unlock publishing functionality, but if you don't want to seem sus, you'll likely want to make hundreds if not thousands of edits before writing full-on articles. Once you build up this Wikipedia credit, congratulations, you can finally start writing your very own articles and publish them into the ether. Wait, never mind, it's not that easy. Even after you build up social credit on Wikipedia, you can't just publish articles. Or I, I guess you can, but it doesn't actually get published when you press publish. Instead, it gets added to a massive queue of over 4,000 articles waiting to be published. It usually takes about 6 months to get through this queue, after which your article will go through a rather arduous verification process. The number one factor that Wikipedia is looking for when approving articles is notability. No amount of fancy writing or editing will get you around this requirement. In fact, Wikipedia deletes and rejects over 200 articles every single day because they lack notability. How do they determine notability? Well, it comes down to how many independent articles already exist regarding the subject. Corporate press releases and websites do not count as notability for obvious reasons. Wikipedia is looking for at least three high-quality sources that contain substantial discussion about the topic. A simple mention is not sufficient. They're also scanning for any sort of evident bias or narrative that you're trying to push. These rules are already pretty stringent if you're writing about an organization or event. 
but if you decide to write about a person, the scrutiny increases several fold. The reason being that Wikipedia wants to avoid libel and slander, which was notoriously common back in the early days. In fact, at one point in time, Wikipedia claimed that Tony Blair, the former Prime Minister of the UK, worshipped Mr. Small Mustache. Nowadays, this wouldn't fly because each and every line about a living person has to have a direct reference. If it doesn't, it gets removed, even if it's accurate. All of that just scratches the surface of Wikipedia's verification process, but if you're able to get through the gauntlet, well, now you're finally in business. Unlike the process of publishing an article, finding people who are willing to pay for an article isn't that hard. For obvious reasons, companies and people of interest are incentivized to write articles about themselves to increase their notoriety. But this is something that most people and organizations avoid doing themselves because of the repercussions. Writing articles about yourself is strictly prohibited as that's a clear conflict of interest. If Wikipedia's reviewer sensed that a given article was written by an affiliate, not only is the article taken down, but the topic is flagged, making it even harder for future articles to be published about the same topic. This is why many companies turn to a professional service, albeit shady, that specializes in this art. Such businesses have a team of Wikipedia editors with a bunch of social credit to push articles that clients want. One such business is Wikipedia Thrive. Their pitch on the main page is literally, hire certified Wikipedia consultants and claim the fame. There are certain parts of the page that almost make the page seem legit. For example, they claim that they do exhaustive research and utilize domain experts to get authentic information. But just below that, you run into statements like this. Our certified Wikipedia experts have complete command on the exhaustive wiki guidelines, so they can get approval on the first run. Now, why exactly would a legitimate article be worried about getting approval? Obviously, no reason at all. The reality is that the entire site is designed to convince customers about why Wikipedia pages are so important, even more important than Google, and why clients should invest in creating a page that will surely get approved. From an outside perspective, this is obviously super sketchy, but the thing to keep in mind is that the people who are looking for this service are indeed looking for something sketchy, so it works out perfectly. I mean, according to their stats, it looks like business is booming. Wikipedia Thrive apparently has 15,000 edits, 6,000 live profiles, and 50,000 satisfied clients. Even if we assume that each client was only charged $100, we're talking about $5 million in revenue. But that's honestly lowballing it. Way back in 2015, a freelance writer named Mike Wood claimed that clients pay him $400 to $1,000 per article. So 8 years later, that rate has likely only gone up. Even at $400, we're talking about $20 million in revenue. At $1,000, we're talking about as much as $50 million in revenue. And that's just one business. There's dozens just like this. This one company called Wiki Experts Inc., for example, is apparently ranked as the number one Wikipedians company. They claim to have published 4,900 articles for 3,400 clients over the past 10 years. And their motto is, your global fame is just one call away. Some other businesses include Wiki Counselor, Wiki Native, Wiki Consultancy, Wiki Consultant, American Wiki Editors, and Lumino, just to name a few. Some are more sketchy than others, but none are as sketchy as a true white glove service. Most of the businesses we've covered so far are definitely sketchy, but they're not full-on propaganda machines. They'll simply cherry-pick sources that support a given narrative and write articles using these sources. But some more white glove services will just go ahead and create these sources themselves, which brings us into the world of paid media. Getting paid media itself is not that hard. There are legitimate ways to make sponsored posts and or get press releases featured on sites like Forbes and CNBC. But the problem with these avenues is that Wikipedia does not accept sponsored posts or press releases as valid sources. So ironically, getting a Wikipedia page is actually harder than being featured in mainstream media. To get into Wikipedia, not only do you have to be featured on such websites in a substantial manner, but you have to be featured in a seemingly natural and independent manner. This is where PR agencies like Spin come into play. The way this works is pretty simple. These companies basically have a bunch of connections with writers who work these outlets, and they pay them a fee to cover certain topics. 
Spin has connections with all of the following outlets. Theoretically speaking, the writers are the one who have control of what ends up getting published, but this really just comes down to the ethics of the given writer. There's obviously going to be writers who are willing to post anything for the right price. At Spin, for example, you can get one story on Yahoo Finance or Business Insider for $1,000. They're so confident in their abilities that they even offer a money-back guarantee. For $3,000 a month, they can get you into six publications within three months, so it's really $9,000 in total. And finally, for $5,000 a month, they can get you into 12 publications within three months, so for $15,000 in total. Let's just say that this business is also booming, as Spin has been able to generate $30 million worth of revenue within just two years of launching. It looks like there's a lot of egomaniacs out there that are desperate for publicity and attention. Anyway, if you're looking to get into Wikipedia from nothing, you probably want to opt for the enterprise package, so we're talking about 15 grand. After that, you'll also have to pay a thousand or so for the Wikipedia article itself, so we're talking about a total of 16 grand. That's the price to get into Wikipedia without any prior notoriety. But just because you get your Wikipedia article posted doesn't mean that you're safe. Once an article is posted, Wikipedia will continue to monitor the interest on your page and other writers will be able to suggest changes. If your page doesn't get much interest and no one suggests any changes, that in itself will be a major red flag. After all, what type of person who is featured in 12 publications within a matter of 3 months gets only 7 views on their Wikipedia page? No man at all. Wikipedia bots are constantly on the lookout for such pages. In fact, they take down 1,000 such pages on a daily basis. So if you want to keep your Wikipedia page up, you'll have to start paying for bots to view your page. But that's simply the price you have to pay if you're trying to buy your way to fame, as this is the black market of Wikipedia. Someone else that's devoted to the free sharing of information is the founders of the Pirate Bay. If you want to hear about their legendary story, check out this video. But until then, I'm Hardy, and I'll see you guys on the next one.